As we get going on week three of our study of the Mass, remember it's going to be video number four, chapter number four, Responding to God. I have to first of all just acknowledge that we're all doing this online now, and, and, and that's with a, a sadness and, and a hardship. So I, I do hope you've each taken time to, to begin to pray Bishop Lucia's Novena during this time for a prayer to end coronavirus. This is a tough crisis throughout the world. So that will be attached to this email. Make sure you start it or continue praying for, for that end. And uh, just with gratitude for your patience and your understanding, I know so many of you are hungering for the Eucharist. What, what an interesting study to be about the Mass at a time when we can't receive the Eucharist. I hope to put together really soon something on spiritual communion. Probably in time for this weekend as we move towards Sunday Mass and many of us will, will experience even more uh, the pain of not being able to receive. Uh, there's a lot to that. How do we bring that hunger to the Lord and how, he, how does He fill us? So stay tuned. Some of that. Hope to be uh, soon taping uh, these Masses, the Sunday Mass of course and then and uh, daily Mass as well. This is it. It's a little easier for me to do. You, you tape something, you load it online and, and watch it a later date. The live streaming, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out so we can commit to a regular time. So I know there's lots of questions around uh, the live streaming and the videos and we're going to work towards that so you can still feel connected to, to your parish, to, to St. Elizabeth and Seton and, and your church, which you love so much. So yes, there's options with Bishop Lucia and others and I hope you're taking advantage of them. Uh, but I do want to try to reach you right here from, from your, own, your own house, your own home. Remember, uh, church doors are unlocked. Pretty much keeping them unlocked about 7 to 7. You know, that's a lot of time in your day. When you're trying to find new routines, working from home, uh, stop by. You know, the, the tabernacle, the Eucharist, has been moved into the main church to allow greater space. So you can really be distant from each other as you make prayer. And confessions are available in that main worship space as well. Uh, at normal times before this session begins at, at 7 each week. We're already meeting on Wednesdays at 6, so that remains Wednesdays at 6 and Saturdays at 4. And of course, by appointment, call the office if you need to uh, make an appointment for confession. So a little housekeeping before we start into what's in front of us. Bishop Barron does, does some great things in the beginning. He gets excited about a couple of great books he's, he's read along the way. Moby Dick, Lord of the Rings. Maybe, with this extra time we'll have on our hands being at home, take up some of those great books. Moby Dick's a great one. Lord of the Rings is a little bit longer, huh? Trilogy, maybe this drags on any longer, but we'll need something like that to, uh, to continue studying. So just kind of a reflection on, on, on Bishop Barron's suggestions. Uh, we might really truly have the opportunity to, to do that, to take advantage of, of the... Think about that. You have a, a speaker you're inspired by, well, what inspired him? Maybe I can read original sources, you know, his, his own uh, things he's been, he's been up to. The other thing I kind of took away from, from his teaching this week on responding to God is the idea of being patient, uh, running towards something you don't understand rather than running away. That's important to, to know. I, I mentioned it in my, my homily on the Transfiguration reading, right? I come across this word, tense. Why, why would they want to build tents? Oh, turns out it means tabernacles. Turns out i got to read and learn all about this feast of tabernacles and Old Testament sacrifice. When something hits us as a hmm moment, lean into it. Don't run from it. Lean into it. Why do we do that? Why can we go forward towards what confuses us with confidence? Well, we believe that the world is, is made in the design and by the word of God, it's intelligent by its own structure. That we're not going into it alone. We're asking the Holy Spirit to, to be with us. Our previous study of the wild goose, like the, the relationship with Jesus Christ is, is real for us, and, and the Old Testament Father, you know, has always you know provided for us. We saw that as we studied the Old Testament. The Holy Spirit is just as real. This is real. So that, that idea that we have spent time already as a parish studying the Father's plan unfolding, Jesus incarnate in, in, in the Gospel of John and, and, and the, the Father Pavanka's study of the, the goose. So that's who you're studying with. The, the wild goose is, is leading you and guiding you. The Word made flesh is our guide. Think about the road to Emmaus. That the Word made flesh unpacks what was in Scripture. And he's able to do that by that point of entry when those on the road share what's difficult for them. 
Remember, they're walking along downtrodden, downcast. What is it? Are you the only one who doesn't know what's happened? See how their initial reaction kind of covers their pain. He, Jesus is patient. He deals with that and unpacks for them what's going on. What do you mean? You know, we ask some more. So with us, the pain of not being able to receive communion is what's immediate in our minds. But anytime we struggled with something in a homily, something in the scripture, lean into it. Say, God, I don't want to run from this. What does that word mean? What did that expression mean? How, how is it that St. Paul wrote this or Isaiah wrote that? What does that all mean in, in Exodus? We lean into it. We notice the questions stir up in us. And I love the, the, the pressure he put on me and Deacon Bill Dodder. He's giving you guys a, an insight into what the homily should be. We're, I talked to Deacon Bill. We're going to have to up our game now. The, the Bishop Aaron has given you guys that, that insight. The homily is meant to, to awaken questions that come from experience, human experience. It, it stirs up, yeah, yeah, I was wondering that. And then it finds the answer that's there in the scriptures. Let's the questions that rise up from human experience meet the answers that rise up in scriptures. And that is honestly what Deacon Bill and I try to do for you each week and, and bring to you uh, a certain uh, perfect kind of uh, coming together of, of, our, of what's in our hearts, questions and, and answers. What's going to allow that awakening of a question to happen? That's, that's worth paying attention to. I don't have any questions. I just I heard it. It was fine for me. No, no, no. What allows you to say, huh? Huh? Slowing down does, right? Slowing down. That might be a gift of the days that are in front of us. That when we slow down, we get more of a huh. Right? Tell me more about that. But if we're always on the go, we're always trying to feed the hunger and keep moving. Uh, we get a little cranky when something doesn't make sense, right? I think of the Snickers commercial. You're not you when you're hungry. You're not you when you're hungry for an answer. And if you don't even pay attention, if you don't even notice that you're hungry, how do those commercials go? Someone has to step in and say, hey, you're being miserable right now. Hey, take off Snickers. Oh, right? Something great about that. If someone around you says at Bible study, you slow them down at Bible study, you say, right, I didn't even realize I was being cranky. I'm not me when I'm hungry, angry, lonely, tired, whatever it is. I'm not fully me. So I've got to slow down. I've got to have someone in my life that points it out to me and says, hey, you're wrestling with this. Pay attention. What more is going on there for you? So thank God for people in your life who, who do that for you. The other thing that was kind of worth noting in his teaching was the, uh, the Nicene Creed. What, what a nice explanation uh, of some of the really important words of the creed. He says they're, they're fighting words. And if we just kind of stand up and, and go through them, because that's what we're supposed to do, we miss it, how important they were in history. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial. Some of you watching this have asked me, why consubstantial? Well, you got your answer from Father Barron in the video, didn't you? That's fighting words, very important words. So what else in the creed has struck you along the way as, huh, why do I say that each week? Why do we say man? Why do I say this? Why do I say these words? Don't let it just fly by. Slow down. Say the creed more slowly. Maybe with these televised masses that you're going to have in the couple, uh, the couple weeks ahead of us, that's it. I can slow down. I can let myself say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been struggling with that word. And you can go. And, and act on it. Well, where does he go for an explanation? Where can each of us go for an explanation? Catechism of the Catholic Church. Included in the email will be a link. Uh, I've shared with you in person on our first night, but I want to give you the link now that we're doing this via email to, to the Catechism Online. You certainly can buy your own copy, but check out what our church provides for us. Immediately, part one, the profession of faith. Here's the creed. Before we go anywhere else, Let's spend this much time with the creed. That's quite a bit. That's quite a bit of time on every word we say of the creed. Yeah. So whatever has kind of made you go, huh? There you go. Come right to it. As long as I got the book open, I'll just keep pointing out what comes next is, is the celebration of Christian mystery, each of the sacraments, of course, including the Mass, which we're talking about. That's why a lot of your workbook references go to the Catechism. It impacts it in the Mass, the living out. And then, what's life in Christ look like? You know, morality, 
and the commandments. And finally, Christian prayer. How do I keep this life going? Those are the four main parts of the catechism. It makes a lot of sense. The creed, how we live it out, sacramental life, moral life, what does it look like, and how do I keep it going in prayer? So let's make sure that the catechism remains a resource that you, you go to often. The last thing was just a throwaway, kind of caught me. I was, let me be honest with you, I was watching this video of Fish and Bears at the gym, right? So I'm working out just as he's wrapping up, and I'm watching this video, and what do I do? I said, huh, he just said that priest, prophet, and king, and he kind of makes a self-push to, to check out something else. Well, I grabbed my phone up. I started typing it in right then. I didn't want to lose track of what that reference was. And I found a whole nother series on this. And I clicked and started watching the video. Do the same. Watch the opening credits of that video. That is filmed at the seminary in Chicago where I teach three times a year. When I'm, when I'm missing on the weekdays and, and you don't see me, I'm out teaching at the seminary in Chicago, you will no longer feel bad for me when you see the shots of that. Wow, what a place, huh? I jog along those paths around that lake. So I'm hooked by the beauty of it. And then I keep watching as he's explaining more and more priest, prophet, and king. I get hooked on another thing he says, and I clicked on another link from there. It's, it's easy. It's easy to take advantage of what's in front of us. Netflix already has you figured out, don't they? You finish one thing, and it says, next show starting, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. How do we end up binging on Netflix? It's because one thing leads to another, leads to another. Or when you come back, it says, suggested for you. I feel like that's what this Word on Fire uh, and Engage app can do for you. Please, 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 in this time at home, take advantage of all that's there. When you get the huh, don't run from it. Slow down. Lean into it. Grab the catechism. Google the next video by Bishop Barron. Let yourself just go deeper and deeper and richer and richer uh, in your understanding of, of our faith, especially of the Mass. Again, it is a great joy to continue our journey together, albeit uh, through, through, through video. Uh, but I'm praying for you, and I know you're praying for me. I'm feeling the strength of those prayers. I'm super, super grateful for that. And, and hang, hang tight to continue to look for announcements. Just a notification. An email notification on this class comes from uh, Flocknote. The Engage program comes to you via Flocknote. That's one thing for adult education series. Separately from our website, you'll see in the very foot of the, the footer of the website is uh, our, our email subscription list through MailChimp. All right. So some people are saying, "Oh, I missed that. I didn't get that. Why didn't I get that?" There are two different things going on. So the adult education you have signed up for, we're pushing out to you through the Engage and Flocknote. The updates on when things close, what's happening with masses, uh, are going to come through Flocknote. So probably do yourself a favor, subscribe to, to both places. You know, stay with us. On the engage and the and the ongoing week to week, we'll keep doing these lessons and, and I'll and I'll push out Bishop Barron's videos, but hang also with the uh, the subscribe and follow us here on on the front page of the, the website. You'll also see at the bottom a a uh, um, uh, picture uh, for Instagram and the F for Facebook. So Facebook, Instagram, and and our our uh, Mailchimp emails are going to keep coming at you. Let's stay connected to each other as best we can in prayer. Speaking of prayer, let's pause for a moment and ask God to bless us. Good and loving Father, thank you for the many ways that you continue to allow us to appreciate the gift you've prepared for us in the Eucharist. Open up our minds and hearts more and more to all that the Mass teaches us, fills us with. And as we are separate from Eucharist in these days, Jesus, fill the hunger in our heart for spiritual communion with you. Bless those who are sick and, and awaiting some healing. Bless the doctors, nurses, therapists, everyone on the front lines trying to battle coronavirus. Give us hope, the hope that Mother Mary Ann Cope had as she continued to care for those who were in need in Hawaii. We ask all these things through the Blessed Mother's intercession. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, 
Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.